And before we take a look at our first solution, let's see how we can utilize React DevTools to measure the performance of our application. Needless to say that my assumption is that you already have installed the React DevTools. So if you haven't yet, please reference the React Fundamentals part where I covered the install step-by-step. Step. And once we install the tools, we'll get these nice tabs in the DevTools, the components, and the profiler. And throughout the course, we have been looking at the components. However, in this section, we'll spend a lot of time in the profiler. And before we navigate to the profiler, let's also discuss something very important. If I navigate to my extensions, while I'm developing, I can see that the React developer tools have that red icon. And once I click on it, notice it right away tells me that the page is using development build of React. And something important to keep in mind, by default, while we're developing, our application is going to be slower because React is doing extra checks. So don't be surprised if your development application is slower. Again, that is happening for a reason and that is happening by default. So for example, if I navigate to one of the projects we worked on during the course and notice this is a hosted URL. And if I'll check, I'll see that this one is actually blue. And this is also something very important to keep in mind. You don't want to ship your development application to production. So you don't want to host your development application. Why? Well, because it's not meant for production. So whenever you want to push this up to production, make sure that is actual production ready application. Hopefully I make myself clear. And once we navigate back, now let's go to a profiler. And before we even look at anything, let me just show you my setup. So we're all on the same page. So once I click over here, notice as far as the general, I'm using the dark theme, but of course, you can switch to light or auto or whatever. Then as far as density, I went with comfortable. I just like that they're spanning all across. And this one is very nifty, this checkbox. And you'll see in a second why. Basically, every time we'll do something, it's just going to highlight the components that are re-rendering. Then we have debugging. In here, I have first two checkboxes. And then when it comes to components, I'm just expanding the tree by default. And I don't think I changed anything in here. I have this setup, and then for the profiler, I just have record why each component rendered while profiling. And essentially, if we want to take a look what's happening in our application, we just go to this button. Notice the start profiling. It's going to turn red, and then start doing something in the application. And like I mentioned before, I like that option where it highlights pretty much all the components that are re-rendering. And I'm going to use this ranked. I just prefer this setup better, but of course you can also use this one. And effectively you can see that, okay, my application loads, right? I expect all of them to render. Then on every button click, notice all of my components re-rendered. And it even nicely tells me why. The parent component rendered. So what happens? All the items in my list are re-rendering. Pretty much I clicked 13 times and same scenario. Now, of course, the times are going to be different and all that, but that's not the main point. The main point is that all my components are re-rendering just because I'm changing one value in the state. And in the upcoming videos, we'll cover possible solutions to such problem.